Well, hey there team, welcome back to the channel and welcome to my overview of Half-Life Alex. Well, I don't know, I guess we'll call it an overview, maybe I'll even make another segment, I'm not sure. But this video might be a little bit shorter than usual. This is obviously out of season. I've played a chunk of Half-Life Alex back when it came out, but I did see that it was on deep sale this week and thought, yeah, look, let's make a video shout it out. So a revisit of old, if you will. So I highly recommend this game. Absolutely worth your time, worth your money. The, the big discount is helpful, but of course it's VR. Is there ever truly a game that is a killer app that justifies buying a VR headset for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I mean, probably not, but this would be as close as you could get to it. At the very least, it's a must play once you do have VR and probably the best first game for you to start with. It has the incredible signature Valve polish that you've come to expect. God, it's a bit tragic that they don't make more games, but at least we know when they do, they bang. I'll be fairly broad. Obviously, I recommend it, and I'm going to put more time into it myself because I've kind of fallen down the rabbit hole. It very much captures the Half-Life vibe, that mouthfeel, that Eastern Euro, I mean, apocalypse after a certain fashion in that, you know, alien occupation and sort of being more of a destitute, miserable depression space that, you know, skirts its way into horror with dark areas and essentially, you know, bugs and parasites that have piggybacked their way across with the alien invasion. So, you know, things like Ravenholm and that very early in this, you're essentially aping Raven home, crawling through the dark trying to get a flashlight, fighting bloody head crabs. It's phenomenal. So it feels like Half-Life, which I, I suppose would probably be the biggest thing that people would wonder about. It doesn't actually feel like some spin-off. It absolutely feels like, well, the prequel to Half-Life 2 that it is. While I'm rattling off notes that, you know, stand out to me, there's something to be said about the, the pace, like they get the pace right. VR is still a burgeoning genre, you know, and there's a lot of experimentation going in there. You could argue a, a big part of the VR space, even though I'm not super into it, is actually very old school indie proving grounds, right? They're trying to figure out what works and what doesn't. And one of the cool things about this, even though you've got that rich environment and you've got a bit of a story and you've got old mate from Bloody Flood of the Concords talking in your ear for better and for worse. I'm, I'm sorry, rest of the world. I'm a bit burnt out on him because I got him 10 years more worth <laughs> before you did. I sound like a sourpuss saying that. It's very funny. I'd say 90% of the the jokes land and some of them are a bit ugh. but it's it's very succinct right the, the pace keeps going you keep moving there's a lot of action, and, and that is inherent in the VR landscape, and that's something I really like about VR. It's it's kind of difficult to do a VR game where you sit there and watch story cutscenes play out in front of you because there's something to be said. It's a mixture of the player that's attracted to it, but also being in that moment, being more mobile, right? Whether you're standing up or sitting down, but you know, you've got the headset on, you've got your hand controls. You, you're kind of already predisposed as a player in that moment to be engaged, to be physical, to pick things up, touch them, interact with the environment. And so there is a sort of physicality come gameplay focus that is inherent with a lot of VR design. And, you know, you step it back and look at the 100 foot view, you end up with a game like this where, yep, there's a bit of story, there's a bit of development, but you've, you're also moving constantly, constant locomotion on VR, because I don't cover VR very much, but I am fascinated forever by it. And I have a bit of a love-hate relationship because I am quite prone to motion sickness more so than most. And the real danger is, you know, the more indie EA type attempts at VR quite often can be janky and, and uh, you get sick quite easily. Though some of them just nail it and it doesn't matter. You can keep the headset on for hours and you're fine. And this is the latter. This is the gold star. Uh, you can probably see by the footage that I opt in this at least to take the teleport locomotion. I don't know how else to call it that. And I'd be curious if you're not a VR player and maybe you're looking at this footage and you, you maybe find it jarring outside the box looking in. Know that it's not really noticeable. Outside of occasionally being fiddly, like trying to place yourself in a specific spot. But as far as like the moving, it becomes very second nature. There's something about once you, you know, get the hang of it, it becomes very organic and you kind of just fall into it. So it's one of those things. I recognize that, yeah, maybe you think it looks bad or not fun through B-roll, but when you're in that moment, Similar to the general argument you hear about VR, which is if, if you've never had the experience before and all you've watched are, you know, like YouTube flat videos of it, you don't 
get it. And, you know, that's not trying to be exclusionary or mean or anything like that, but you just can't possibly get how wildly different and wonderful it is being in that moment. And the same goes for those locomotion controls. Obviously, you don't have to do that. You can, you know, there's a whole suite of different things, but that was just the default that was on and it works perfectly fine. The combat is so fun. Another thing I noticed is like the game, the, the gunplay as I see it is gameplay and fun loop first and and let's say simulation second because it's been a few years since this originally came out and I, I've dabbled with a lot of games in the background and a lot of them sort of try and tap that Tarkov mill sim type path and they kind of lose the forest for the trees like right now we don't have the fidelity in VR tech to have a million little tiny buttons and twizzles and the more that you fuck around with your inventory and you know, the more stuff that you start trying to make your game do in VR, it kind of falls over. And yet, there are other games like, well, I should check out Carry Command 2 in VR, actually. But, you know, those oversized, large, almost comical-sized buttons that you can press in some games as, like, an artistic design. That is more what you should be going for in VR, I think, if you want to try and get fiddly about controls. Why am I mentioning this? Well, because you drop all your magazines. You're not allowed to backpack any of your half loaded magazines so it's either dump all the bullets or dump the magazine and that's great that is more like i said that's gameplay over realism you just grab mags off your shoulder you put them in and you'll have a basic gamey little puzzle system with the gun that's less about getting it right and the fidelity of the correct you know safety lock on or whatever all it is is put the mag in you've got a eject button and you've got a flick the slide forward button for the pistol, for example. And the amount of times I've brain farted and gotten them back to front. And you better believe whether that was intended or not. That was kept in because of that during playtesting. I'm sure that they had plenty of that happen in their internal team. Where you're about to pull the trigger and it doesn't fire. And then you press the button. You accidentally eject the mag. And it just becomes this screaming simulator while the monsters are bearing it down on you and you keep dropping your magazines and then you get like the shotgun i just got replaying it now and and that's great as well you jam the shells in back to back you rack the slide you flick the thing shut so and they get away with a little bit more because it's more of a sci-fi shotgun anyway so look they're just some thoughts that come to mind it's incredibly accessible usable and as as an example you know all the mechanics the loops some of a grandfathered, some are grandfathered in, you know, like throwing barrels at barnacles, that sort of thing, smashing marked boxes for loot. And then the other things, everything else that they've invented from, you know, the way that you load and interact with a weapon and ammo to how you pick things up and you flick them. And it's all very second nature. So yeah, Half-Life Alex, brilliant, still brilliant, very cheap. Get it, play it. If there's only one VR game you ever play, it should be this one. Anyway, team, I might just leave it there for the time being. I'll catch you guys on the next one.